Hello, my name is Coral. Welcome to my channel. I'm here today with uh, some of my favorite books, specifically horror books that I read in 2021. Almost all of these are 2021 releases, uh, but also in order to break this video up kind of into two, I'm going to be doing a separate video for the indie authors and publishers that I love this year. Uh, so this one is mostly like big five publishing company books, mostly. So if you want to watch my indie picks, there will be a separate video for that and also a separate video for some of the not horror or ho not horror adjacent books that I loved in 2021. It was hard to choose. I actually had five more books on this pile that I took out. These ones are really specifically ones that have just stuck with me through the year. First, I would love to tell you about Come With Me by Ronald Malfi. This is about a man named Aaron whose wife has recently died really tragically and he's going through some of her things and he finds a receipt for a hotel room, not in their area. And also like, you know, usually spouses know, partners know if their partner is staying at a hotel room for some reason. And Aaron does not know why this would be in her stuff. And it starts sort of this obsession of his to figure out why his wife is in this place and what she was doing. There is a murder mystery kind of a thing going on. And I think what I love the best about this is the atmosphere in the whole book is like a stormy day. It's like a stormy, swampy day. It just feels gloomy and dreary and almost claustrophobic. And the end, like my eyes aren't getting teary thinking about it. It was just so uh, impactful and amazing. And I really, really love Ronald Malfi's work. And this is one I would definitely recommend picking up if you haven't. This next one is the only one on this list that was not published this last year, 2021. This is Tomie by Junji Ito, and it is a horror manga. It is a giant, giant book. Uh, and really this is kind of like vignettes, like little short stories about this young woman named Tomie who is, hmm, I don't, I don't think I want to give it away. I think uh, you just should know that she has some, something special about her. And I really love this. I, I know I've seen some reviews where they say it's repetitive and it is. I mean, this thing that Tomie does, she does it over and over again. Uh, but some of the ways are much different than others. And I really liked her character. So it was okay for me to be reading these things that are happening over and over because I just really like Tomie so much. Next on my list is more horror adjacent. This is a like dark academia thriller YA book, The Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Emire. And this is about Devin and Chiamaka and they both go to this school. I think it's Nivius. I was gonna say Nivius. <laughs> Nivius Academy and Chiamaka, she comes from a more affluent family, whereas Devin is at that school on a scholarship. He he lives with his mom who is a single mother and things are tight for them. And so a lot is riding on his ability to keep this scholarship. And so when these rumors start about Devin and Chiamaka and the whole school is um, getting like text messages and things like that about secrets that Chiamaka and Devin are keeping really, a lot is at stake for them, but especially for Devin, I think, but also for Chiamaka. And they want to get to the bottom of who is telling everyone these secrets and how they possibly could know. Lots of mystery, lots of um, betrayal and things like that. This was really a fun one. It was hard to put down. Such an easy readable book and a book that I felt had really relatable characters. A great one for YA readers and people who just sort of dabble in YA. Um, this one didn't feel too young. The teenagers didn't feel like they were uh, too incredible, you know what I mean? And I thought it was relatable and interesting. This one might be my most favorite of the year. Maybe, I don't know. 
I think it's a tie. Uh, this is Good Neighbors by Sarah Langan. And this one isn't like straight up horrific in your face horror, but it deals more with like the horror of uh, familial trauma and how trauma can be like inherited and passed down if it's not resolved, you know what I mean? This is about this tiny neighborhood and it's more uh, affluent a little bit, but there is a family who moves in um, they've been there for some time now, but they're definitely like the newest people on the block. They're called the Wilds and they're a little more unconventional than the other families in this little cul-de-sac. The dad's an ex-rock star and the mom is like an ex-beauty pageant queen and you know, she is not afraid to wear clothing that the other moms might feel are is a, is a little revealing and um, they kind of let their kids do their own thing. They're not, um, they're not helicopter parents or anything like that. And it's very different than the other families. And at first everything seems to be going okay. Um, the mom of the wild family, Gertie, she makes friends with another mom. She's very much kind of the, uh, social queen bee of the moms in the neighborhood. And everything's going okay until it's not. And Gertie can't really figure out why. And then like, while this is happening, this sinkhole opens up in the park across the street from all these houses and the queen bee's daughter falls in the sinkhole and it, it rocks the whole neighborhood. And this is a great book with like people turning against each other and what just like one simple rumor can do. And yeah, this is, I mean, I read this in January. I believe this came out in January and it stuck around for a whole fucking year in my head. And I can't tell you guys how much I loved this book. I really loved it. I definitely need to read some more Sarah Lincoln because man, this one just blew me away. The complexities of the relationships and it's just so good. Next on my list is The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah Harris. This is about Nella and Nella works at a publishing company. She is the only black employee in the office she works at. So she has to navigate through these relationships with her um, white co-workers who being that they're in publishing are like trying to be woke but aren't always good about it and uh, I don't know, I don't say woke as a disparaging thing like some people do. They just don't always know how to treat their black coworker right. And so Nella is very excited when she sees another black girl being interviewed for a position in her division. And as this is happening, she starts to get these notes that say, leave this place now, leave the publishing house, get out of here. And things start to happen and she thinks that the other black girl, Hazel, might be behind it, but she doesn't know why. It's really hard for her to understand. And this is a really great thriller. It gets really dark and the ending blew me away. And this is another one that I read close to the beginning of the year and it's really stuck around in there. Next on my list is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This follows a young woman named Jade Daniels and she is in her senior year of high school and she has a sort of a rough life being a native girl in a small town in Idaho where predominantly there are white people and she also lives with her dad who is an alcoholic and she has to kind of fend for herself. In fact, she has a job like as a janitor at her own school, which seems like a special sort of hell for a high school girl. Uh, so Jade copes with a lot of this stuff by watching slasher films and she is just a slasher maverick. She knows everything about it, all these weird details and she has theories for things that are really interesting and um, interspersed through this story about Jade and what she thinks is a budding slasher in her town. There are also excerpts of a thesis she's working on for like her, I don't know, I think it's maybe a history class. And so it's just really fun. And I don't think it takes itself too seriously, but also it does feel like the author is writing from his heart. He put a lot into Jade Daniels and she is a really relatable 
empathetic character and she, you know, has some dark things that have happened in her past. It's another book that left me kind of not feeling great at the end of it, um, but feeling sort of hopeful. And I really love Jade and I was so excited to learn that this is not only going to be a duology, but I believe a trilogy. So I'm excited to get back to Jade. I thought she was one of the best characters I read about in a book this year. And this is just such a great book, especially if you like slasher films. And I have to admit, I am, even though I, I really like horror movies, slashers are something that I've just gotten into maybe the past two years because I thought, you know, it was just like Friday the 13th and Freddy Krueger and Halloween. And I didn't realize just how many different slasher films there are. And that's just a little bit about me, I guess. That has nothing to do with the book, but this is especially good if you like horror movies. Okay, we're at the end of this video, but first I need to talk about Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. This is another one that's uh, horror adjacent. This is a crime fiction book, but I think a lot of people who read and love horror also have read this book and have liked this book. And like, this is a really good book. This is probably my tie for my favorite book of the year. Uh, it's just written with so much emotion. This is about two gay men in an interracial relationship and they are gunned down and it seems as if it wasn't an accident. It happened in public, but it looks more like a murder, especially to these two young men's dads. And really the police seem like they don't want to deal with it. Uh, you know, they were it seemed like they really wanted to say that it was just a freak coincidence, but um, Ike and Buddy Lee, the two dads, really don't think so. And they are two men from backgrounds where they have served time in prison. And because of this, they might have a certain set of special skills that become useful to them when they are trying to track down who killed their sons. And these are dads who previously did not have great relationships with their children, um, sort of because of their sons being gay, but also because of the time that they spent away from their sons in prison. And so um, even though there are people who come from vastly different backgrounds, Buddy Lee is a white guy, Ike is a black guy, they find some commonality and are able to help each other and help themselves and get to the bottom of this. And it's just really emotional and makes me wanna cry when I think about it. And it's it was just such a really, really good book. It blew me away. I mean, I, had, I haven't read anything by S.A. Cosby. I believe he's got two books out. And this is his second, if I'm right. Like I heard people say things, but I hear people say things about so many books. So I decided to pick this up and I'm so, so glad that I did. His writing is exceptional. I can't wait to pick up his other book, uh, Blacktop Wasteland. Jesus Christ, like this is just such a good book. Uh, I can't tell you guys enough how much I loved it. I think this is one that I need to send my mom. I'm sure she's getting sick of me sending her books because she doesn't quite read them as fast as I do. Um, anyway. Those are seven of my favorite books of the year. Like I said, I will have videos of the indie publishers and indie authors that I really love this year and a video separately of the not horror and horror adjacent books that I love this year. So keep, a, keep an eye out for those if you're interested. Let me know what you thought about these seven books. If you happen to have read any of them, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you later. Goodbye.